Hi. In this video, I'll explain in a very simple way the concept of X-rays getting formed by electrons transiting from one shell to another shell. So what happens is that on the left, you can see a sphere uh, that will come and hit the sphere on the right. So the one on the left is the incoming electron from the cathode. The spheres on the right denote the electrons in the anode, let's say a tungsten anode, and uh, they are formed in different shells, K, L, M, and N. Now the tungsten atom has its electrons rotating uh, about the nucleus, as you can see, and uh, the bullet electron, the electron from the cathode, comes in uh, like a bullet and bangs into the atom of the tungsten anode. Now if the electron uh, knocks out uh, any one of those electrons from the tungsten anode, then X-rays will be generated and they'll come out of the form of waves or photon, as you can see this animation. Now let's look at a still image of the tungsten anode atom. So close to the nucleus, which is at the center, you can see the K shell, some blue colored electrons in the innermost orbit. The next orbit, uh, having yellow colored spheres, denote the L shell with its own subshells. And the next outer orbit is the M shell and then the N shell. It's just to give an idea of the shells. Now, each one of those shells or orbits is arranged in the form of straight lines for simplicity. And now an incoming electron from the cathode knocks out an electron from the K shell of the tungsten anode. So there's a vacancy formed in the K shell. We can call it a bullet hole. So inside that bullet hole or vacancy, something has to jump in. And here, an electron from the L shell has jumped into that vacancy and X-rays are generated. It's also possible that when the incoming electron knocks out an electron from the K shell, the one jumping in is not from the L, but from the M shell. So now the vacancy will be filled by an electron from the M shell. It's an example. In this case, again, X-rays are generated and they will be called K X-rays because it's a vacancy in the K shell that's being filled. So in this way, several electrons can jump in and fill that vacancy. Let's look at another example where there are multiple electrons jumping. So the incoming electron knocks out an electron from the K shell of the anode. And uh, let's say we have an electron from the L shell that's uh, filling that vacancy. Now there's a vacancy in the L shell that could be filled by an electron jumping in from the M shell that creates a vacancy in the M shell, which in turn is filled by an electron jumping in from the N shell. Each of these jumps will create X-rays. In this particular slide, I want to talk about the energy level. The K shell has electrons in their lowest energy level. As we go to the outer and more outer shells, the electrons have higher energy levels. The meaning of that is as electrons jump from higher energy level into the K shell or into a lower energy level, they will emit X-rays equal to that difference in energy. So here we have an electron jumping in from the L shell into the K shell and so it's called a K X-ray. Subscript is alpha because it jumped only one shell. Now if an electron jumped from the M shell into the K shell, again it's a K X-ray with a subscript beta because it jumped two shells. So that's K beta. Let's look at an example where an electron jumps from the N shell into the K shell to fill that vacancy. Again, it's a K X-ray and the subscript is gamma because it jumped three shells. In this way, the X-rays are named. If an electron jumps from M shell into the L shell, you would call it an L alpha X-ray Alpha because the jump is only for one shell. If it jumps two shells, then it would be called an L beta X-ray, having filled the vacancy in the L shell. So the energy that's released in each of these jumps is different. Now, if an electron merely jumped from the last N shell into the M shell, that would be an M alpha X-ray, and you can see that the energy jump is not that much. So this X-ray would have a lower energy. In summary, if you draw a graph of the intensity of X-rays versus the wavelength, then you will see some spikes. You can see those blue colored spikes. These spikes show electrons 
jumping from one shell to another and x-rays having been generated. So these are called the characteristic x-rays because they will show what material of anode has been used. You will not see continuous spectrum in a case where electrons are jumping. The continuous spectrum is the Bremstra lung radiation and these spiked portions are called the characteristic x-rays. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.